It was, it was a good year. Uh, we had, a, you know, about seven or eight students with our SYMA English school. Peter was one of them. A uh, young man, 17 years old, and uh, he came and honestly thought he was a Christian, but uh, realized that he did not fully understand the gospel message correctly, became a Christian in the summer of 2020, and his older brother starts asking him questions like every good older brother would, right? Uh, and start asking about becoming a Christian and, and, and what did that mean? And asking Peter the question, what is faith? And so Peter comes up to me. I'm actually a journal partner with Peter. And every week we kind of send the journal back and forth. And he's asking me, my brother's asking me, what is faith? What do I tell him? And so I wanted to give him an answer that was very accurate, of course, but very thoughtful and helpful and practical. And so um, I, I wanted to really wrestle with this, and it, and, and it leads to our topic for today is uh, believers are justified by faith. And so I'm going to read from Romans 5 and uh, 1 through 9. And so you're welcome to open up your Bible if you'd like. And uh, it'll also be on the screen that I'll read. All right, Romans 5, 1 through 9. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we exult in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word teaches how can we have saving faith? How can we be justified by faith? And Lord, I pray that you would help each and every one of us learn more and more from your word and increase in our understanding of you. And we just thank you for this time we have. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So just a quick overview of the gospel. And, and I'm not going to go into every step you know, in full detail, but basically just kind of give this quick overview. Basically, the gospel message uh, it invites sinners to trust in Christ for the forgiveness of sins. It is an invitation. This is something we can do, okay, that we can invite people to, to accept Jesus Christ. Regeneration makes it possible to respond to this invitation. This has nothing to do with us. This is all God's power. Basically, God's power, basically, he can regenerate the person to be able to uh, be converted. Uh, the third step is conversion. Believers respond by trusting in Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Now, the next step is applying redemption to us. God responds to our faith and does what he promised to do to declare our sins forgiven. And this is called justification. So what every person needs is we need a legal declaration from God stating that we are completely forgiven and no longer liable for the punishment that we deserve. A correct view of justification is crucial to our understanding of the gospel. This is the barrier uh, that separates the true gospel of the Bible of salvation by faith and false gospels that are out there that often teach that you can be saved through good works. And many, many martyrs have died because they stood for the true gospel 
and rejected the false gospels that are out there. So when you think of the word justified, you know, is there something that comes to your mind? I think for a lot of us, it might be the courtroom, you know, or our judicial system. Um, this is, uh, w you know, what we often hear when we think of that word. Our judicial system it, it is when people have charges brought against them and they go to trial. And the accuser brings uh, the evidence against the defendant. The judge then has to decide if the defendant is to be declared righteous or not. The defendant is looking to be made, uh, to be made right before the judge. And peop just like people, all people need to be made right before God. And many, believing, uh, many people believe that uh, there's a lot of different ways that they can be made right, right with God. And that's where it is important for Christians to share truth of the gospel with others. And so, I, I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard, I have. I've had people come up to me and says, well, this person I know, they just need to be able to find uh, truth uh, and just follow their heart. I don't know if you've ever heard anything like that, that someone needs to follow their heart. Well, what does God think about people, non-believers, following their own heart? Well, he says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? So that is the human heart that we're born with. When we are born, we're born enemies of God. That we are born not part of God's family. And that we need righteousness. We need to be declared righteous by God in order to be approved to become a son or daughter of God. And, and so following your heart is not a message that's going to work out for most people. They're not going to stumble upon truth by following their heart. So, and there's other false gospels. There's a lot of people who say, well, you just have to be sincere in what you believe, and, and you, as long as you are sincere in what you believe, you will find your way to heaven. And well, what does God say about that? John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so this is a very important part, uh, a moment in this message that I want to add two words to the title of my message, is believers are justified by faith in Jesus. So it, it isn't just genuine faith in whatever you want, but you need to have genuine faith in Jesus. And that's how you can become justified. And so the, the only way to get to heaven is through faith in Jesus. So uh, people need to uh, realize that, you know, there's 7.7 .7 billion people, give or take, in the earth right now. And I'm sure all of them, they, they probably believe in something or have some kind of opinion or idea of what happens after you die. And how can you, if, you know, if they believe in God, you know, that you can be made right with God. In Japan, I can tell you, you know, we've, we've been there since 2015, and the people there, they're not, <laughs> they're not into worship, okay? They, you know, basically, if you did a survey of all the people in Japan, most of the Japanese people are going to say that they're either Buddhist or Shinto. I'll get into that in a little bit. Buddhist or Shinto or both. They actually believe, you know, multiple gods is, is what they believe in, and, and you can you know, that is kind of where they're at. And so when we start talking about religion, we start talking about Christianity and what do you believe and, and what is religious activity that you do, they get a little uncomfortable. So this is, I mean, I mean, we've been to Thailand, for example. The people of Thailand, they're very serious about their Buddhism. And, and I really believe, falsely, they worship Buddha. You know, it, it, this is a false religion that they do, but, but they're very into worshiping Buddha, and, 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 and that is something that they do when we were there in Thailand. But when, when we talk about Japan, it's, there's a few things they have to do. There's a checklist. Um, you know, like for example, Obon, is an, it's coming up here in a few weeks. It's in the second week of August every year. Basically, work is closed. 
It's a national holiday. People don't have school. They don't have work. There's a, a lot of travel going on inside Japan. People going to a hometown. A lot of times it's grandma's house. And grandma in one of her rooms has a shelf. And on that shelf is, could be the ashes of a, a deceased ancestor. And what they do during Oban is they put the favorite things, could be favorite drink, favorite food, other things that that person likes, and put it on the shelf next to their ashes. Why? Because they're trying to find favor with that dead ancestor. They're trying to help that dead ancestor as that dead ancestor, they believe, lingers around the earth for about 40 years after they die. That's what Shintoism is, and that's what they believe. For 40 years, they, the spirit lingers around, and, they're, and the people that are alive on earth are trying to help that person get to heaven, you know, the better place after that period of time. And but this is ancestor worship is what they're doing. But I can tell you, just as I've talked to many people in Japan, it's not this real important worship that they do. It's an obligation. This is something that they have to do. This is something I have to do for my dead ancestors. Um, it's a to-do list. It's a checklist. Uh, if you've heard of a Christmas and Easter Christian, it would be much like that. This is just something that they have to do because, I don't know, it's who they are. So what we did, then need to do as Christians is be able to communicate what is truth from the Bible. And, and, and actually, Jesus talks about this ancestor worship, and he does it in Luke chapter 16, and it's Lazarus and the rich man. And I'm not going to go into the full story, but basically... Um, you have Lazarus, who is eating the food scraps from a rich man's table. So you have a rich man and Lazarus. And basically, Lazarus lives a life that's very uncomfortable, maybe even miserable, and the rich man has all he wants. And basically, after they both die, Jesus says that Lazarus goes to a place of great comfort, and the rich man goes to a place of great torment. And, and his initial question is, hey, have Lazarus help me dip, you know, dip his finger in water and put it on my tongue because I'm burning in this fire. And, and, and he's told that, oh, no, you can, he cannot do anything for you. And then he goes, well, well tell him to go talk to my family. And what, what we need to teach is what Jesus teaches is that once a person dies, that person's soul cannot contact living people. And we can't contact dead people. So there is no you know, conversations or anything else going on or help to one another once someone has died. The rich man in Hades, you know, he asked Lazarus to talk to his brothers about Hades, and Abraham responded in Luke 16, 26. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. So th these are the types of truths that kind of counter Shintoism in Japan that we need to be able to share with people uh, what does God say about these topics. Now, I'm going to go back to Peter. Peter's the SYME student, was there last year, became a Christian in the summer, and he's being asked by his brother, what is faith? And, and what it looks like is the Bible does answer the question. It actually gives a good hint in the book of Hebrews. Um, Hebrews chapter 11 is called the Hall of Faith, and I just want to you know, bring attention to the verbs in these short phrases. So basically, God is describing in Hebrews people that have saving faith and Abel offered sacrifice. Enoch pleased. Abraham went out. Abraham offered up Isaac. Isaac invoked blessings. Jacob blessed sons. Joseph gave directions. And Rahab gave welcome to spies. And there's actually more examples than that. But basically the point is, is that you, the, what is verb? It's an action word. You can actually see examples of faith through people's actions. So Peter, uh, his brother actually attended SYME. Katur and I, you know, we were there in 2016 when he got there. His older brother, his name is Cam. He's a guy in the far right here. And basically, pretty nice guy. Um, pretty quiet, very intelligent, 
uh, he actually later w went on to Hungary uh, to, to actually do some uh, university study uh, at a school in, hung in the country of Hungary. And uh, basically, you know, so Cam is asking Peter, what is faith? And, and I want to help him respond. You know, how, how can we give him an example of, of what this might look like? And I kind of gave an idea of gravity. So I could take my computer and I could lift it up here and I could drop it and I could display for everyone here gravity. But I think you have all probably seen enough examples of gravity. I don't need to break my computer today. Um, but gravity, can you see gravity? No. You can see evidence of gravity. That is the gravitational pull that, that you actually can see the evidence of. You don't actually see gravity itself. The second example, I gave the Peter to share with his brother was the love of Cam's mom. You could ask Cam, says, Cam, do you think your mom loves you? Peter thought, yeah, he probably knows that. Well, can he see his mom's love? No, you can't see your mom's love. You can see the evidence as his mom does nice things for him, takes care of him, and, and just expresses love to him. You have these, this evidence of love that actually is observable, that you can actually see it. And, and I think that's, you know, we kind of, you know, so we can share a couple examples of things you can't see, but you believe in because you can see the evidence of it. And so um, the Christian faith, you know, when you meet someone for the first time and someone says, I'm a Christian, do you 100% confidently believe that they are a Christian. Well, let me share with you about my life. I was a Christian for 31 years before I became a Christian. I'm going to say that again. I was a Christian for 31 years before I was a Christian. And what I'm telling you is, is if at age 30, if you had put a polygraph on me and said, Skip, are you a Christian? I believe I would have truthfully told you, yes, I am a Christian, but I wasn't. I didn't realize, I did not have an understanding of justification by faith alone in Christ alone. And, I mean, I grew up in a house that went to church. I was baptized as a baby. I, I tried to be a good person. I took communion. You know what I mean? I'm doing a lot of things trying to be a good person. And ultimately, what it really means is I believed in Jesus. I believed he died on the cross and rose and went to heaven. You know, and and believing in him. But the thing is, where I was confused is I thought that you had to believe in Jesus and you had to do good works. And as I was, I had friends that shared with me at the age of 31, this was such a key verse for me, was Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. And so this was a very crucial for me, because trust me, I was definitely um, hung up in my works. It said not as a result of works. I was trying to work my way to heaven. How, how good do you have to be to work your way to heaven? <laughs> well, it's perfection, and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. So this was a very important verse for me to understand um, that I could not go there on my own. I had to, had to believe in, in Christ alone and accept the free gift of salvation. And once we're saved, the Christian's behavior should start to change. And, and this new, your, your new creation, you should seek to repent from your sins. Are we perfect? No, we're not perfect. But we should be trying to grow spiritually, to grow in Christ-likeness as we get older and older. Uh, can you see a person's faith? James 2.26, For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. And I want to share evidence of faith. Basically, these two are great examples of evidence of faith. Basically, you have Sonny and you have Emily. They were SYME students in 2017. And basically, they, they wanted to go to the SYME English school in Japan. They wanted to learn English. I don't think 
either one of them really cared that much about learning the Bible. They, they had career aspirations. They wanted to finish this English school, go on to a university, get a high paying job and have a successful life. Basically, that was what they wanted when they went. Well, they got saved and God changed their plans God changed their lives. And this is all evidence of faith that we can all witness. Instead of going to those universities and pursue, you know, just a, a career seeking just money, they, step by step, they first made the decision, I'm going to not go to university. I'm going to go to the Word of Life Bible Institute in South Korea, the same one I went to, and I'm going to be a student there for one year. Well, then after one year there, they said, hmm, maybe I'll go to New York they have a second year program. So they went to Word of Life Bible Institute in New York in the second year. And basically until last summer, what were they gonna do? And truthfully, I think if COVID didn't come along, I think they would be in a school somewhere in the United States right now, probably a Christian school. But God changed their plan. And, and basically the safest thing with COVID was just to go back to Japan to do our internship program. So they're online students. Imagine how hard that is. They're Japanese people, and they're taking Liberty online courses in English. So in a second language, they're, they're doing university studies, both of them right now. But they're living in Japan. They're serving with, at our English school in Japan as part of their internship program. But the point is, is you can see evidence of their faith through their actions, what they're doing, that, that they have been changed, that God has gloriously saved them. Um, and, and all of their family and friends can see that going on. So, so what can Peter do with his brother Kim? He can start displaying that fruit of the spirit of the Holy Spirit, and and basically his outside actions, his brother, his older brother can see it and say, "Wow, you have changed." The most important thing non-believers see is joy and peace. Basically, I can tell you the Japanese people. There's a lot of guilt and shame with the Japanese people. They are well aware that, that they have fallen short and that they have done things wrong. Um, most of them are not standing before you saying, oh, no, I'm perfect. No, they're not. Uh, there's a lot of guilt and shame. Unfortunately, Japan is very high in rankings of suicide rate around the world. Um, so there is a lot of hopelessness. But when they see joy and peace, in, 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 you know, in Christians, that's when they say, I want to know about the, the joy you have within you. So uh, Jesus also said that he expects Christians to bear fruit. Matthew 7, 19 and 20 says, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. So I guess the important thing to think about is like I was when I was younger. If people say, I am a Christian, but you watch their behavior, and you can't tell the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian, it might mean <laughs> that that person saying they're a Christian was like I was. And honestly, not lying, just didn't understand justification by faith alone in Jesus. And in, in the Christian life, we should look different at your workplace, in your family reunions, uh, you know, at school, that when people look at the Christian, they should be able to see something different. The Christian life is one that we need to live a life with purpose. Our purpose is to glorify Jesus Christ here on earth, it, it, whether it's in Battle Creek or if it's in Hemeji, Japan. Wherever God has you, your purpose your number one purpose as a believer in Jesus Christ is to glorify Jesus Christ wherever he has you at that time. And, 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 it's, and it, it, your, your faith, your beliefs should pour out of you and people should be able to see it. Now there are two parts of justification. Um, number one is sin is removed from the believer. And, and believe me, that's great. You know, mile high pile of sin and, it, and we need to have our sins made right or, or to be justified. But if, if all we did is remove the sin, we're kind of like a spiritually neutral. You know what I mean? We, you know, we're, we're just kind of 
neutral. You know what I mean? But the great part of justification is the second part. The righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed onto the believer. Wow. This is a huge step, is, is that when God sees believers, he sees the righteousness of Jesus. And so, you know, as we have faith in Jesus Christ, we can actually um, uh, have that righteousness of Christ. So the, the justification is the foundation of the Christian life. Uh, Christians need to trust and obey God. Uh, we need to have faith in a God that we can't see right now. We can't see God, but we know he's there. Why? We see evidence of God's presence. And so that is how we can, it, it helps us firm the foundation of our belief. We need to trust in God's promise that he will legally declare our sins to be forgiven when we believe in, by faith in Jesus Christ alone and his work on the cross and we are encouraged, you know, by all this clear evidence that God gives us of his existence and, and his work in our lives and, and how he's working through people around the world. 